Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Let's Play Vooktech with no fair fight and a new Let's Playthrough, the Cataphract playthrough. Now what is that? As we all know, there are affinities for machines, meaning the longer a pilot pilots one type of machine, he gets benefits. Some of these benefits are in percentages, some of these benefits are just in points, and some of these benefits give you abilities that you normally can only get, for example, if you have neural implants. What I mean is the scrapper affinity, which is shoot then move. So shooting without penalty and you can end up behind an obstacle, shielding you from enemy fire after you've shot yourself. With that being said, there is a certain amount of machines that can do that, the Jenner 2C, um, the Phoenix Hawk, the Vulcan, the Cataphract, the Mad Cat 2, Turrican, Battlemaster, there are a few of them. However, they're all really hard to get. Those of you who've seen my last playthrough noted that I've taken a start with two Phoenix Hawks, but then failed to get more Phoenix Hawks. So I think, Boris, what can you do? And then I came to a conclusion, the Cataphract. Now you ask why the Cataphract, that's a 70 ton machine. Um, but it's a scrapper and there is a place where you can buy them. Normally you see to get machines, you, summons, you collect scraps from the battlefield, put them together and then you have a new machine. But that does not work well with affinities because, for example, if you have a pilot trained on a Phoenix Hawk and you get the Phoenix Hawk shot down under him, he will have to take another machine and you will most likely not have another Phoenix Hawk at hand, do you? And the chances of getting the same machine multiple times is hard. But if you can buy a machine reliably, you can train the affinity to their fullest. Now, when you look at the prices of the machines, you will notice that the price is very, very, very uh, highly. So, for example, you can buy a 30-ton machine for 7 million, or you can buy um, a 70-ton machine for 9 million, or you can buy a 40-ton machine for 13 million. So the prices are a little bit um, up and down depending what you buy and where you buy. But the price of the cataphract is very stable at about nine, 8 to 9 million C-bills. And mind you that this machine is available at the same planet constantly. And that is the planet where it is built. That's... Um, Taken off. Now, normally the shops are random, but there are certain items in certain planets that will almost always be available, and that is the planet where the stuff is built. Makes sense, which is very good. That's the reason I like that game. So, with that being um, said, normally a salt max or a heavy max in that regard, or a salt max that's a higher category than the cataphract is, are uh, really, really expensive. The cataphract at 8 to 9 million sounds very expensive, but is actually okay for its price. Yes, you can buy a Marauder for 7 million sometimes, and that is, of course, a fa fabulous machine, no question there. But the Cataphract is a machine that you can buy reliably at a reliable price with not great variation. And what I want to give you is the opportunity or uh, my way to play the game that you can copy, that you can do yourself. Of course, you can build around that. You can say, okay, I take two cataphracts as my main unit and then build something around that. I don't have to use an entire cataphract lance. But if you do, all your pilots will be trained in cataphracts. And if, in, if one cataphract gets shot down, you can just buy another or have another in store because they're readily available and you're not losing your affinity benefits from that. Now, point taken, the affinities that a cataphract has are very limited. It's a scrapper and it's protected equities. So, um, in total, at the end, he can get the ability to shoot, then move and multi-target. And he gets the 60% less chance to get critted, which is not too bad considering that we're mercenaries. Our job is not to win the battle, our job is to survive it in the first place. Because we're not fighting for honor, we're fighting for money and you cannot spend money if you're dead. With that being said, most larger machines do not get killed by um, being shot to pieces, it's by being critted. Because a mech can take a lot of punishment. You die in high machines, heavy assaults from the crits, not so much from the total damage involved. With that being said, this opens opportunities for us. What do I mean by that? Let me show you. 
Now normally you would go for three mech parts, right? Because you need to collect mechs from the field, that's where you get your machines, but we do not. We take eight parts because we're never ever ever going to collect mechs from the battlefields. We're just taking parts, not mech, parts. Now we can take the contract payment at generous because that helps with the fact that we actually want um, to buy our mechs. That helps a lot because we're getting a lot more money. Now, for those of you who are firm in the Battletech lore, know that the planet of Tikhonov is very close to Outreach, which is the starting point of the mercenaries. However, I would not recommend starting as mercenaries for this build because even though it's only 24 days from Outreach to Tikhonov, Tikhonov is part of the Lyran Commonwealth. Now, I know what you want to say. Tikhonov is part of the Liao house, but that is not true in this timeline. At the moment when you start the game, um, Tikhonov has already been taken by the Lyran Commonwealth. To be really precise, it's been taken by House Devian, but when you look at the map, it's part of the Lyran Commonwealth, which means you get only 15% price increase if you start in the Lyran Commonwealth because of your relationships with them. If you start as mercenaries, you pay 25% extra, which will make it in most cases impossible to buy the first cataphract outright. Yes, there are instances, the prices vary, where you get, get the 8.1 million um, expensive cataphract, but that is unlikely. Most likely you will get the 9.6 million cataphract which is impossible to buy at the start, even if you take Merchant and the starting 6 million. So we're starting at Steiner, even though it's 64 days away. Yes, you can start as Liao, it's closer to Tikhonov. You can start as Devian, it's closer to Tikhonov, but you always pay the 25% increase instead of the just 15 if you start as Steiner. Uh, we don't need really um, mech recovery chance because we can buy our machines. Um, this is okay. Starting experience we can get to 7,000 because we have a starting bonus. Rolling hiring chart release is 50%. That's okay. We take three pilots per system. We take full lethality because we know what we're doing. We must take maximum starting money. Trust me, there is another part in terms of money that will really, really, really hit you hard. But um, we'll see about that. We don't need selling prices. We don't need scrap returns because we're not going to scrap anything. So this is the build, difficulty one. Remember, if you've got difficulty higher than one, it will not do anything about the your victory points. So in my eyes, that's not worth it. So this is how we play. We could may take Ronins to um, zero, wouldn't make any difference. This build is not about pilots. This build is about the machines. Now you ask Boris, what's about the machines that is so impressive? The Cataphract is not an impressive machine. It's a Frankenstein mech, originally, built from parts of Marauders and Phoenix Hawks and all that jazz. If you want to know more about the Phoenix Hawk, there is about the Maro um What am I talking about? If you know, want to know more about the Cataphract, of course, there is an excellent video from the Big Red K, Big, Big Red 40K on YouTube an entire episode just about this machine. He explains everything about that machine. And he's uh, one of the most competent um, Battletech um, storytellers. With that being said, there is, of course, Text Talks Battletechs. There is Baradul. And there is um, the slimy, slimy blob guy. I forget his name all the time. Uh, you can see his warriors. There is a, a, an orange blob teardrop thing whatever uh very 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 good um with that being said let's start the game and i'll show you how it works so character creation we take of course merrick because in my eyes tactics is what makes the world go round tactics enables you to act faster tactics enables you to see or scan the enemy so you're not getting minus five accuracy for not seeing the enemy and you're not getting minus five accuracy for not being sensor lock or able to sensor the detect the enemy that's very important that does much more than gunnery could ever do for you we take history for you guessed it bookish another sensor bonus so normally normally we would absolutely go for officer because we get um, officer in command, which again increases your sensor ranges and your side ranges for your entire lance. Absolutely perfect. And you get two vehicles that you can just sell. But 
that aside for this plan to work we need the merchant yes i know i know that's basically dead after the first day because you get the three million and then you're just a merchant and is honest that will not help you a lot in the game but the starting money is required for this build i'm sorry so we need a name we take the same as always from my old tabletop days We need a voice. Testing. Um. Uh, what? Ah, oh, God, I was sleeping. What do you want? Perfect. And let's see each other in the ship. And here we go. So, uh, first thing you will notice is that I already changed the name and the icon of the mercenary group. Yes, this is originally um, the sign of Grim Determination. That is a mer mercenary group um, with a C rating in the mercenary board. So this is one of the worst mercenary companies you can have. But we're just we're just taking the icon because Killer Turtle is most embodied by this. Yes, this is an SRM and I believe in long range fighting. So it would be better if it had a long range missile launcher on it. But surprise, surprise, the Cataphract don't even have any missile slots. So we'll be um, using mortars instead. Why that? Because mortars cannot be intercepted by AMSs. And I really like mortars. This is a good weapon in my eyes. I know it's a little bit uh, ammo consuming, um, but still a good weapon. With that being said, it is not important which mechs you start with. Totally not, because they will be always swapped out after at least, I think, five battles and they're gone. With that being said, let's look what we have. We have a shadow a stealth okay this can be sold immediately we don't need that we have a holander we keep that we have a trebuchet is that the long range trebuchet no it's the srm trebuchet crap um mongoose please be the one with the large no he's not away with it and we have a panther that's okay three machines all we need vehicle bay sell the skimitar we don't use tanks Yes, I know it has an uh, LRM-15, but we don't care. With that being said, let's look at the pilots. You. F Federal, uh, that's not important. Mech Warriors, okay. Solaris Gladiator is not okay because we pay 20% upkeep for something that we'll never use. You're out of the window. Yes, it's harsh, but that's how I am. So... You have Mech Warrior, Bookish, I like. You've got Military, I like, because that's the easiest way to get minus one recall. And we'll be using projectile weapons in the beginning. You are Military, that means you're already bought. This is myself, nothing I can do about me. Oh wait, I can use some of the points to get stuff up. We're just going the ta tactics tree with everyone in the beginning. Oh, God, now, there is something new. Want? Normally, you would take Tactician for maximum sight and sensor range and advanced sensors and ish initiative. However, we will take Cautious because we'll be jumping around a lot. And that will enable us to do some really weird stuff. Trust me, this is going to work. Majestics. Just everything goes into tactics as fast as possible. Tactics is the way to go. We need tactics more than anything else. Confirm. Let's look at the rest of the pilots. If there's someone else we have to throw out. You are military. You're in. You are military, you're in. You are criminal. Ooh. And nobility. Hmm. Not really what we want. Maybe we have to switch her out too. Military is in. Oh God, I was sleeping. Majestics. Militaries in Solaris Gladiator. Ah, maybe I should put you out too. Do we have any pilots to buy at the moment? Big Sly, how about you? 
Ex-military, you're in. Commander, merchant, athletic, Macquarie, you're the best. You come with me. You! Noble, bookish, merchant, ex-military, Macquarie, you're in. Hooray! Um... Let's look at the barracks one more time. I think, I think, I think, I think we should g get rid of someone else. I keep you because you've got military. You just criminal ability. That is not really something I want. Uh, you're you're perfect. I like you. You're perfect. I like you. Ah, he's a mech warrior and he's military. I can live with the fact that he's a Solaris Gladiator, even though we don't use that a lot. But that's okay. So, we're not buying anything, unless they have something really, really interesting. Which I do not believe they have. They don't. We're going to sell it. We're going to sell basically almost everything. Just out of the window. The only thing we'll keep is the Beagle Active Probe, the Endo Steel, and the bigger engine. The heat sinks will be sold. And now comes the shocking part. We're selling the XL engine. Yes, we will. Because every machine we buy has an XL engine already. Every cataphract, because we're buying the 3D. Now, when you hear cataphract, you think of the 1X, of course. But that's the old version. That's not the version they sell anymore. So, no problem. We're selling the mask. We're keeping the Pathfinder and the Recon Sensor. That's okay. Sell all that. Perfect. Navigation. Um, we do not have a lot of money. So, we cannot buy the big stuff. That's weird. Uh, that looks weird. Um, so we cannot buy the big stuff or build the big stuff. But what we can do is build the stuff that takes a lot of time and do not take... Um, that do not cost a lot. So this is 15 days and we will need structural repair later on. This just needs power conduits. This is 10 days. It's not that expensive and it will help a lot. So we're... Okay, I think... It will be hard. It will be hard. But I think we can afford it. So... Um, that's it for now. When you look at the map, you will notice that we have to travel a very... This is the map. For those who don't know, this is where Tarkit Tikhanov is. Where we go to Barmerji. 64 days. Yes. If you start from House Liao, not that far. If you start from Outreach, which is somewhere here, not so far. I think it's here, over here. Not so far. If you start from Devian, it's not so far. Even if you start from Terra, it wouldn't be that far. It's very far from our point. But it's okay. It's 400,000. It is still worth it. Why is a car parking in my navigation? Nobody knows. Nobody cares, actually. So, see you all next time when you do the traveling. See you then. Bye.